Hi, here we are in 10.3 parametric equations and calculus. So we're going to look at the parametric form of the derivative and also the second derivative. All right. So if we have a smooth curve C um, and it's given by these two equations, X in terms of T, Y in terms of T, then the slope of C at X, Y is going to be, well, Y prime or dy dx, is going to equal the derivative of the y in terms of t over the derivative of x in terms of t, okay? So long as this derivative dx dt does not equal zero. So what's the second derivative? So y double prime, also noted as d2y over dx2, is the derivative of that dy dx. So what does that mean? Well, it's the derivative in terms of t of this guy. So we're going to take the derivative of y prime and then we're going to put it over the derivative of x in terms of t. So that denominator stays whatever dx dt is. Okay, so let's jump right into our first uh, example here of finding all sorts of things. So we want to find the first derivative, the second derivative. We want to eliminate the parameter uh, sketch, which it's kind of already sketched for us, and then we want to find the slope of uh, at t equals zero. Okay, so let's uh, dive right into here. All right, now we're given our two equations, x equals e to the negative t and y equals e to the 2t. All right, so this is what we're looking at here. So diving into the first derivative, we need dy dt. We need dx dt because the first derivative is dy dt over dx dt. So dy dt is 2e to the 2e, 2t, and dx dt is negative e to the negative t. So just uh, putting that into the ratio, we get this guy here, but then cleaning everything up, we're going to get negative 2 times e to the 3t. All right? Okay, so we're going to use that to help us find the second derivative. So that's step two, okay? So remember, the second derivative is the derivative of dy dx, so the derivative of this over dx dt. So the derivative of our first derivative, so the second derivative is negative 6e to the 3t, and dx dt is still negative e to the negative t. So putting these, this ratio together, we're going to have a negative 6e to the 3t over negative e to the negative t. So this simplifies as 6e to the 4t. All right, so that's just simply finding the first and second derivatives. And now we have to go ahead and eliminate the parameter. So eliminating the, eliminating the parameter means we need our equation in terms of x and y, get rid of the t, all right? So what we can think about is we can solve for, since y is in terms of e to a positive t, we can solve for e to the t in our x equation. So x is really equal to 1 over e to the positive t, so e to the t is really equal to 1 over x. If we were to square both sides, we're going to end up with e to the 2t, which is what we need for y. Okay, so now we can just make that substitution directly, and we have eliminated our parameter. So there is our equation, y equals 1 over x squared. All right, so now we want to go ahead. The, the next thing they wanted us to do was find the slope at t equals 0. Now remember, the slope is dy dx, okay? So we already found dy dx in step 1. So now we just want to evaluate that at t equals 0. So we're simply plugging that in. Negative 2 times e to the 3 times 0. Right? This guy goes to 1, so we're at negative 2. So the slope is negative 2 at that point, t equals 0. But let's take it one step further. What about concavity? Right? So we have our second derivative, so we can use that. Okay, what about the concavity at t equals zero? So don't forget about this as we're winding down in uh, the calculus curriculum, right? We look at the second derivative and we can evaluate that at t equals zero. We're determining whether the second derivative is positive or negative. So if we plug zero into our second derivative here, we're gonna get six. Six is positive. So since the second derivative is positive at t equals zero, we can go ahead and make our conclusion that it's concave up, all right? If we were to sketch this, create our table of values, 
plug in points, we would get our red curve right here, all right? And the slope at t equals zero would pass through the point one, one, all right? And the slope is going to be negative two. And again, we can see that it is concave up at this point. All right, let's move on to uh, the next example on the next page. Okay, this next example, example two, wants us to find horizontal and vertical tangents of this function here. So where x equals five plus three cosine theta and y equals negative two plus sine theta. In order to find the horizontal uh, asymptote, or sorry, the horizontal tangent, we need to let dy d theta equal zero, okay? So we're gonna focus on this portion right here we're gonna take the derivative of that dy d theta and we get cosine of theta. So when we set cosine of theta equal to zero, solving for theta, we would get two answers here. Theta has to be pi over two or theta is three pi over two. When we plug these both in for theta into x and into y, we will find where the horizontal uh, tangents occur. So when theta is pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, so we're left with an x value of five, okay? When theta is pi over two and we plug in over here, sine of pi over two is one, negative two plus one is where we get negative one. So our first horizontal tangent occurs at the point five, negative one. When we plug three pi over two in for theta, cosine of three pi over two is zero, so again, we're just left with an x value of five. When we plug three pi over two in, for sine of theta, we get negative one. Negative two minus one is negative three. So we get our two horizontal um, tangents and they both occur, or one occurs at five negative one, the other at five negative three. And we'll kind of show this on the graph in just a second. To figure out our vertical tangents, now we need to focus on dx d theta. So we're gonna set dx d theta equal to zero. So dx d theta is just negative three sine of theta. When negative three times the sine of theta equals zero, theta has to be zero or pi, thinking about that unit circle. So now we're just going to plug in zero and pi for the thetas to figure out the x and y values at those points. So when theta is zero, cosine of zero is one. So five plus three is where we get eight. And when we plug zero in for sine of zero, that's zero, and we're just left with a y value of negative two. When we plug pi in, uh, cosine of pi is negative one, so five minus three is where we get two for the x value. And when sine of pi, sine of pi is zero, we're just left with negative two for the y value. So our vertical tangent occurs uh, at those two points. And if you see our graph, we can see our horizontal uh, tangent will occur at five negative one and five negative three, and our vertical at two negative two and eight negative two. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about uh, today is arc length, all right? So it's just the distance traveled. So if I wanted to figure out how far did I travel on this curve, okay? And we were given our parametric equations, we would simply take the um, integral from a to b of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared um, dt, okay? So that's the distance traveled, arc length, all right, which we have talked about, but we haven't talked about with parametrics, obviously. So now we're gonna use arc length, and we're gonna figure out the length of one period of a cycloid. So one period of the cycloid, we're really just looking at that distance there, okay? So um, as we get started here, finding the length of one period, we're given our parametric equations and we're told um, on zero to two pi. So this is one period of the cycloid, all right? So I'm just gonna do some back work because arc length is um, I'm going to need dx dt squared. I'm going to need dy dt squared. So before I just start throwing the integral together, I'm going to do the back work and find what those two values are. So if x is t minus sine of t, dx dt is 1 minus cosine of t. Squaring that, we get dx dt squared. 
y is 1 minus cosine of t, so the derivative of that is simply sine of t. Squaring that, we get sine squared of t. So now we can go ahead and plug that into our formula for arc length, and we work through some things. All right. Now, before we actually kind of get into this, um, we are going to need to identify some uh, identities and remind ourselves about some of those. So I'm going to kind of shift our focus over here, pause the video really quickly to get these down uh, for sine squared of t, for sine of t, and sine of t over 2. All right, so um, these identities, well, one of them will come into play in this example here, but make sure you get those down as uh, we go through. All right, so uh, plugging into our arc length, we're taking the integral from 0 to 2 pi because that's one period of a cycloid. Uh, here is dx dt squared, and here is dy dt squared. And what we should notice is cosine squared plus sine squared, that equals 1. So we can kind of clean that up using that identity. All right, and so what are we really left with? We're really left with the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 2 minus 2 cosine t. Now, this isn't necessarily going to help us, so we need an identity to kind of clean this up. And that's where some of our identities come from over here. Okay, uh, let's see if I can get those together. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to need one of these guys. So I noticed that I have this 2 minus 2 cosine of t, so somehow I want to, and it's the square root of it, so I want to work somehow within these. Well, if we factor out a 4, that's going to allow us to have 1 minus cosine t over 2, okay? 1 minus cosine t over 2, this portion right here is going to get us to this identity. So now we can go ahead and use that identity to make that substitution. So taking the square root of 4 gives us 2, and the square root of 1 minus cosine of t over 2 is simply sine of t over 2. All right, so now we can use a u substitution, and we can uh, integrate this very nicely. All right, so if u is going to be t over 2, du will be 1 half dt. And now we have our substitution. You know, just as a quick reminder, as we're getting towards the end, when we uh, do that u substitution, change your limits. All right. And so integrating this, we end up with negative 4 cosine of t over 2. Evaluating that from 0 to 2 pi, we end up with an answer of 8. So the length of one period of a cycloid is 8 units. All right. So if you do have any questions on this, uh, obviously, let us know. Have a good day.